ご紹介ありがとうございました、えー、森正弘です、えー、私は今年の2月に86回目の誕生日を迎えました今日この特別セッションで特別の機会を作っていただいたことを大変名誉なことだと思っております Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Masahiro Mori. Last February, I celebrated my 86th birthday. <laughs> I am honored to be given this opportunity to be the featured speaker for this special session. Today, I will take you back to the good old days of early robotics when I was able to be absorbed in new challenges and talk about how I became aware of the Bukimi no Tani, or in English, The Uncanny Valley. Fifty-five 後で九州工業大学の名誉教授になりましたが残念ながら3年前にお亡くなりになってしまいましたその山下君と一緒に私は人工の指の研究をやっていましたその時の映画がありますこれは16ミリですがここでその3本指の企業の動作の映画をご覧に入れましょうただ申し上げておきますが実はこの指はコンピューターで制御したものではありません。Half a century ago, I was working on automation technology at the University of Tokyo Institute of Industrial Science. I recognize that the ultimate goal of automation is to automate human labor. With this motivation, my student, Dr. Tadashi Yamashita, and I developed a three fingered hand. Dr. Yamashita, who later became Professor Emeritus at Kyushu Institute of Technology, regrettably passed away three years ago. I would like to show you the movie that we took back then of our three-fingered hand. No computer was used to control this machine. Finally, we will demonstrate the work of rotation of a grass pencil by our automatic artificial finger. The mechanism has three fingers, and each finger has three degrees of freedom. Each joint has one sensory organ, which detects the touch of objects. This device works automatically in obedience to the predetermined programs of a controller. それはまだロボットというテクニカル,テクニカルタームもなかった時代ですがその頃人工の手は新しい大きなテーマでした今日のために当時の人工の手の写真を探してみましたそれがこれです当時どんな研究が行われていたかといいますとまず放射性同位元素を扱うマスタースレイブのマニプレーターそれから工業用ロボット人工,のち人工知能としての人工の手の計算機制御そして技師の研究です
それらは当時から大変エキサイティングな研究テーマだったのです。In the 1960s, there was no technical term robot. In the dawn age of robotics, developing an artificial hand was one of the major topics of research. The goals included master slave manipulators to handle radioactive materials, industrial robots, computer control of artificial hand for AI study, and prosthetic arms and hands for disabled people. Already then, It was an exciting research topic. 私は先ほどお目にかけた機械の手の研究のほかに義手にも関心を持っていましたこれはその当時の最先端技術で作られたウィンハンドと呼ばれたものです筋電流で制御される電動義手の写真です古い写真でしかありませんが人間の手によく似た美しい義手でした As I was working on developing a mechanical hand, I became interested in prosthetic hands. This is a photograph of the Vienna hand, which was made using the most advanced technology back then. It was controlled by myoelectric signals. I only have an old photo, but it was a beautiful hand that looked quite similar to a real human hand. 義手は外観が極めて重要ですそして当時でも手の表面のきめや血管の膨らみ爪指紋などがそのリアルにできたものがありましたそのような高級な義手は一見生の手のように見えるのですがかえってよくできているだけに作り物であることが判明した途端気味の悪い感じに襲われるものです When it comes to prosthetic hands, the appearance is very important. Some models simulated wrinkles, veins, fingernails, and even fingerprints. These high quality prosthetic hands had achieved a large degree of resemblance to the human hand. But because of this, when we realize that the hand is in fact artificial, we experience an eerie sensation. 例えば握手した時の悪感ひんやりした冷たい触覚などちょっと不気味な違和感を感じてしまいますこの不気味さというものはマイナスの神話感ですからグラフで示せば赤いマークを施したように神話感はマイナスの谷底に落ち込んでしまうことになりますそして義手が成功にできているほどこの違和感を大きく感じるのです。私はこの現象を不気味の谷と呼ぶことにしたのです。For example, we could be startled during the handshake by its limp, boneless grip, texture, and coldness. When this happens, we lose our sense of affinity and the hand becomes uncanny. In mathematical terms, this can be represented by a negative value. The more elaborate the prosthetic hand, the stronger the uncomfortable feeling becomes. I decided to call this phenomenon the Uncanny Valley. 私はそれまでに作られていたいろいろなロボットを外観と神話性の空間にマッピングしてみました。例えば、工業用ロボットは機能一点張りの設計ポリシーで作られているので、人間への類似とも神話感も低いのは当然です。I decided to plot the appearance and affinity of different types of robots onto a chart.For example, the design policy of industrial robots is clearly based on functionality.Thus, it is natural that both human resemblance and affinity levels are low. それがおもちゃのロボットになると。機能よりも外観に重きが置かれるので大まかに人間に似てくるそして子どもたちはそれら小型の人造人間にかなりの愛着を感じるらしい By contrast, a toy robots designer may focus more on the robot's appearance than its functions Consequently, 
the robot will start to have a roughly human-looking external form, and children seem to feel deeply attached to these toy robots. また、最近では義手も大変リアルなものができてきて、ちょっと見ただけではそれということがわからない。そこで義手などに見られる不気味な谷という現象を考慮に入れて、神話感の曲線をまとめたものがこのスライドに示す。不気味の谷プロファイルです。Recently, some prosthetic hands look very real, and you cannot easily tell the difference between a real hand. This slide shows the uncanny valley profile that describes the level of affinity of some items, including the prosthetic hand. 日本の伝統芸能の一つである文楽で使われる人形も。興味深い例です文楽の人形は近くで見ればそれほど人間との親和度が高いとは思いませんしかし適度に離れて観客席から眺めますと寸法の絶対値は消化され逆に目や手の動きをも含めた相対的な類似度は極めて人間に近いのではないでしょうかそしてその芸術的演技に人間が引き込まれることを考えますと、親和性は相当に高いわけで、これは不気味の谷を超えたところに位置づけられると言えましょう。文楽、one of Japan's traditional performing arts, is another interesting example. On close inspection, a 文楽 puppet does not appear very similar to a human being. But when we enjoy a puppet show from a certain distance at the theater, the puppet's absolute size is ignored, and its total appearance, including the hand and eye movements, is close to that of a human being. So, given our tendency as an audience to become absorbed in this form of art, we could say that it, there is a high level of affinity and that the puppet can be mapped on the other side of the uncanny valley. ロボットというものは動くものですこの動きというものは人間を含めた動物一般のそしてロボットの命だと考えられるのですが動きというファクターが加わりますと静止している場合に比べて不気味関数の山は一段と高く谷は一段と深くなる傾向がありますさらに外観は多少違っても動きの様が人間的であれば神話感は高くなるということもあります義手の場合で言えば動かない義手に比べて最近の精密な近年を使った動力義手はこの傾向に拍車をかけるわけですこれをグラフとして整理してみました Movement is fundamental to robots and when the movement factor is added the peaks and valleys of the uncanny valley graph Will be amplified. Also, even with the appearance of the object is a little different from humans. If the movement is humanly, the level of affinity will become higher. On the other hand, when a prosthetic hand that is near the bottom of the uncanny valley starts to move, our sensation of eeriness intensifies. This graph shows this phenomenon. <laughs> 1970年エストスタンダード石油の広報誌であるエナジーという雑誌でロボットの特集号が出版されることになりましてこのスライドの左側がそれですけど私もその監修者として加わりました右側はその当時の私の写真です<笑>私もまあ皆さんと同じように若い研究者だったんですね数えてみると今の年齢のちょうど半分ですそしてこの機会にかねて考えていた不気味の谷現象をエッセイとして求めましたこれが私のアンケニー・バリーについて書いたオリジナルの記事です In 1970, I was asked to become a supervising editor for a special issue on robots for a Japanese journal called Energy which was a PR magazine for SO Standard Oil. On the right is a photograph of me back then. I was a young researcher, just like yourselves. 
Come to think of it, I was half the age of what I am now. I took this as an opportunity to write about what I had been thinking, the Bukimi no Tani Gensho. This is the original article on the Uncanny Valley. その私のいや、その翻訳記事が my idea laid dormant for 42 years until two years ago when Noriko Kageki, who is working as my interpreter today, came to me with a project to translate the article for the IEEE Robotics and Automation magazine. On the right is myself that was awakened two years ago when this project came about. The English article came out on the June 2012 issue and my idea was awakened. The Bundak puppet, which is plotted on the other side of the Uncanny Valley, was chosen to be on the cover of this magazine. So, the time has come, so let's go to the end of the document. Robots, humans, the people who are in the 一歩踏み外せば不気味の谷に急転直下し落ち込んでしまうということがあります。この問題はテクノロジーとしても、サイエンスとしても解決しなければなりません。Due to time, let's move on to the conclusion. When it comes to such things as robots, puppets, and prosthetic hands, the closer they become in appearance to humans, the higher the risk that they may tumble into the uncanny valley. We must solve this issue from both a technological and scientific standpoint. In terms of the design issue, I predict it is possible to create a safe level of affinity by deliberately pursuing a non-human design. また、科学の問題としては、我々はなぜこのような不気味という感覚を持ち合わせているのだろうか。一体それはどこから来ているのか。さらにそれが人間に付与された必然性は何なのだろうかということです。これが as for the science issue, the open questions are, why were we equipped with this eerie sensation? Where does it come from? And is it inevitable for human beings? Lastly, as I reflect over the past half century, I would like to emphasize that the reason I was able to become aware of the Uncanny Valley is due to the fact that while I was absorbed in my research and thinking deeply about my research, I was also enjoying my intuitions. 皆さんも小さな気づきを大切にしながらロボットの分野をどんどん発展させていってください。社会はいくつもの大問題を抱えておりますので、目的に直接向かうだけの 
ディニアな研究開発では克服できないものも多いのですそうしたことを克服するために気づきによる発想転換が重要だと思います I sincerely hope that you do not ignore but value the small things that you notice in your everyday life and continue to expand the field of robotics Our society now faces a number of major problems which are not possible to overcome through a linear approach to research, meaning that pushing forward directly toward your goal may not always work. It is important for us to utilize these small notices for conceptual breakthroughs so that we can solve these major issues. Thank you very much for your attention. I am deeply grateful and honored for being given this opportunity to talk and share my ideas with you at this prestigious event. Thank you.